Hi, from the studio in Nitro, West Virginia. This is Unreasonable Doubt. It's a podcast about West Virginia University basketball. I'm Josh Witt. That was the 20th game of the season. It was in Stillwater at Oklahoma State. And this was West Virginia's first game of the season where the full roster was available. Jesse Edwards did not start, but he did play substantial minutes. His wrist was wrapped up, but he was playing. And so you've got a full roster. Oklahoma State has not won a Big 12 game. It was literally a half full arena. It wasn't like they said, this is how many people were there. And it wasn't that many people. It was it was legit half full on a Saturday. So Oklahoma State fans, they're checking out. Oklahoma State did not shoot the lights out today, shot 40% from the field. West Virginia had a halftime lead. They had a seven-point lead with five minutes left. They had a lead with a little over a minute left, two-point lead. Oklahoma State comes down. Uh, West Virginia does not communicate on a defensive switch. Three-pointer, wide-open three-pointer, nailed it. Cowboys up one. Next possession. Noah gets to the rim late in the shot clock, misses the layup. A cook gets the offensive rebound, gets it stripped. Cowboy fouled. The big guy who not good at free throws for the season steps up, makes both his free throws. West Virginia down three. And West Virginia comes down the Kobe a cook pick and pop to a cook who shoots an air ball. A contested air ball three with 12 seconds left. Noah, I don't know what Noah was doing. He pulled down an Oklahoma State guy to the floor with him and then was like trying to get a referee to call a foul on the on the Oklahoma State guy. And that was it. And West Virginia loses by four. They were up by seven with five minutes left. Lose by four. And Raekwon Battle looked bad for the second game. I mean, just out of sorts. Five turnovers, bouncing it off his, you know, dribbling it off his feet, uh, passing. He must have in his head, hey, stop forcing it. And so now instead of forcing shots, contested shots, he's throwing passes to guys who are not there. He just changed the forcing it. So not great. Uh, Sumnick struggled again. Pat Sumnick might have done the Super Mario Brothers star thing, where like he he ate the star, and then he's invincible against Hunter Dickinson, and then the star wears off. You don't you you get the fast music for a while, and then you go back to normal. And Sumnick is back to that. Edwards was back, but definitely not a hundred percent. I mean, it wasn't like Joe Mazzola playing with one arm bad. <laughs> it wasn't Joe Mazzola one hand foul shots with the other with his opposite arm because the other one didn't work. It wasn't that bad, but definitely looked uncomfortable. Iffy if he should have been out there, just just watching it. He he was cleared to play. Doesn't look like he re-injured it. But when he goes to the free throw line and he's shooting with the wrist that is wrapped up, you know that's painful if he's not 100%. So not great. And rebounds got you today. Rebounding has been a concern all year. Oklahoma State got multiple second chances, including late uh, with the kickbacks for three. And listen, your point guards, so Kerr and Noah had 12 rebounds. Noah led the team in rebounding with seven rebounds. Noah, Farrakhan, that guy, your rebound leader. Point guards had 12, and your centers had six. And that is not how that should work. That's not the right math. Not good. And now West Virginia is 7-13. and 13. They're in sole possession of 13th place in a 14-team conference. They've got 11 games before the tournament in Kansas City. And the prospects are you've got a dumb and dumber chance of making the NCAA tournament. And you've got to win five games in five days in Kansas City. And I'm not saying that's impossible, but it is 
it is Jim Carrey looking at you saying, so you're telling me there's a chance. It's that kind of situation. And now they have a minuscule chance. I've tried to talk this team into getting into the NIT with the new rule changes. That's minuscule because, number one, to get there, you've got to have 11 Big 12 teams make the NCAA tournament, which are in some brackets right now. Some brackets have 11. That would be unprecedented as a percentage of teams from a power conference getting into the tournament. It would be the most. I mean, the the Big East got 11 one time uh, back in, I believe, 2011, but that was a 16-team conference. This is a 14-team conference. So to get 11 of 14, that's got to happen which again, unprecedented. And then on top of that, you have to have that happen and you have to jump the team that you just lost to today in Oklahoma State in the net rankings. And spoiler alert, Oklahoma State went into this game over 10 spots ahead of you and they're going to be way more after today. And your easiest road game remaining on paper is at Kansas State, and Kansas State beat you in Morgantown by double digits. So does the picture look bleak? Uh, Some could argue it was already bleak for this season. In this trying to salvage something for this season, all of the scenarios involved winning this game, and you could have won it. You had great games from Quinn and Kerr, good shooting day. For both of those guys, nobody else was on. No one else was on. And and yet you still could have won that game, and you didn't. So at this point, what are the goals now for the rest of the season? Obviously, you come into the season with goals of, like, what can this team accomplish? They, they had a rough lead-up to the season. Barely enough guys to fill up a roster at the beginning of the season, but still had goals. And now you have a full roster, and this is what it is right now, and you've got 11 games left. What are the goals? Here are my goals watching this team the rest of this season. The first goal is to win one more. (laughs) Why is that important? Well, the Hargett season, the last Catlett season, West Virginia won seven games. West Virginia currently has seven wins. You got to get one more. It's not, you don't want to match that season. It's the, it's, it was a terrible season. It led to great changes and was a necessary season for the history of WVU basketball and a, and a upward trajectory. But I wouldn't wish that for this team. You want to win eight. You don't want to be, referenced in statistics of this uh this and the Hargett year are teams that only won seven games. So win one more. And if you hit that goal, so that I don't you gotta win one more. And that can activate the second goal, which is get the double digit wins. You got <laughs> if you get eight, you want to go to 10. And that means winning two more games. And so for West Virginia, there's six home games left. You win half of those. By my math, that gets you to 10. And it's only one more win than nine. It's just when you are looking at historical season records, 10 looks way better than nine. It just does. It's just how numbers work. (laughs) So if you get to eight, don't be content with that. Get the 10, and that's goal two. Are these exciting goals? They are not. Is it something that you have a party winning 10 games? You absolutely don't. But these are the goals you have at this point (laughs) because you've got five road games. They're all going to be against better challengers than, than Oklahoma State. And respect to Oklahoma State, they got their first home win and their first Big 12 win in conference today. And so as much as I'm saying Oklahoma State's not good, if they beat you, then I don't, like, 
do that math. So that's first goal is to win one more. Second goal is activate. If you win one more, get the 10 wins. The third goal is in any win that you have from here on out. And I guess this is activated with just one win, but I could see a scenario where a win in conference that you already have can fit this goal is to ruin someone's chances of making the NCAA tournament. West Virginia is firmly in the bad loss category for another team. When they when we're looking at resumes of who gets in the NCAA tournament, who is out. The good news is I don't think that Joe Lenardi shows up on the screen for ESPN Plus games. I don't think he fits that into his schedule. I think he just does the network games. There are going to be some network games sprinkled in. I know it doesn't feel that way because they haven't had a game on television this year, but they're they're going to be on TV again. But West Virginia, West Virginia's resume will not be shown by Joe Lenardi, but maybe some other Big 12 teams. And right now, again, West Virginia, if you beat a bubble team, then that is in the bad losses list. (laughs) And that's where you want to be if you're West Virginia. At this point, you want to make that graphic. And there's it's kind of a backhanded compliment that you're showing, like you are a bad loss to them. But the good news is that you're on that list because that may drag them out of the conversation of getting an at-large bid, right? <laughs> so West Virginia's beaten Kansas. Kansas is going to ma- make the NCAA tournament. So you're not going to have a resume situation there. Texas is in play here. West Virginia beat Texas. Texas is, I think, projected in right now in a lot of brackets, uh, but they lost a day to BYU. They're going to be on the bubble, I think. They're not, gonna, they're not a firm in team right now. So very possibly, you could be looking at Texas's resume and see bad loss at WVU. You know? So that's your third goal, is to be the bad loss. And then the fourth goal is a little more tricky. This is on you as a fan. You're, the goal is to convince yourself that things can't get worse than what happened in the offseason and how this season has played out. I don't know if that's true or not. I hope it's not true. But, you, but that's the key word there is convince yourself. <laughs> that's two words. Convince yourself that it can't get worse than this i mean think about it if a miracle happens this season and coach eilert has the opportunity to drop the interim tag regardless of what happens on the floor in the 2024 2025 season the off season is going to go better than this off season guaranteed you have my word that it's not going to get worse than the last <laughs> than the last off season. Uh, even if Eilert has struggles getting recruits in from the transfer portal and otherwise, even if he can just hey, I got these D two players, they, they're diamonds in the rough. And he's like, and you kind of sh- you know scratch your head and you're like, I don't know, is this is this going to work out? That is better than the 2023 offseason, okay? It, I've never been so sure that the upcoming offseason is going to be better than the last one. <laughs> I'm, and if, if I'm wrong on that, I will, I, I will happily eat my words because then, like, what could be worse than last offseason? Don't answer that and don't say it out loud. And if Eiler doesn't get the job, and a new coach comes in, then that comes with its own excitement, right? And inherently, new hire, hope, excitement, way better offseason than the last one. Now, in either scenario, either or the new guy, could West Virginia have a, a bad season next season? 
Eilert's second season or the new guy's first? Absolutely. Is it going to be a situation where they're bad because they only have eight scholarship players available at the start of the season? No way. It's not going to be that. I would argue no. And Eilert or somebody new means that whoever whoever is on the roster in the summer is going to be on the roster, barring injury, on opening night. I mean, they'll still be on the roster. They'll just be injured. Remember, West Virginia had like eight scholarship guys available for multiple games. It, it just as a few months ago, like these, look at all these guys. I mean, Eilert played 11 guys today without batting a night. He, he literally could not do that against Missouri State, against Monmouth. No chance to play 11, even if he wanted to. Couldn't do it. <laughs> so whether it's Eilert or somebody else, better offseason and better or, or, or the same or better on the floor next season. I, and I don't even think, I don't think it's going to get worse than this. Again, you're talking about nine, or 2000, what, 2001, the Hargett season, and 2023, we're sitting at seven wins, and that was 20 years apart, and you just go through historically. Not a lot of single-digit win seasons. So it it doesn't matter who's in here. It it's it's it points to how crazy the off season and the season has went that West Virginia's at where they're at. And that any other <laughs> any other result, even if it's more losses than wins, is gonna be better than what we've got. And I'm already doing see, I'm saying it on this in the microphone. I'm trying I'm convincing myself that things are gonna be better and they can't get worse than where they're at now. Unreasonable Doubt is under the Smoking Musket umbrella. Have you been on the Smoking Musket Discord? There's a link to the Discord in the show notes. You click on that, you enter the Smoking Musket Discord, and it's got channels like TV. But these channels is where you type stuff in and people who are in the discord can read what you type in and it can be about wvu basketball wvu football the other sports sports outside of college television movies degenerate gambling just naming channels all sorts of good stuff in the smoking musket discord it's definitely a cool place to interact with other wvu fans Click on the link, check it out, go to smokingmusket.com, listen to West by Pod, do all the things under the Smoking Musket umbrella. Smoking Musket. The next game for WVU is back in the Coliseum Wednesday night, 7 p.m., ESPN Plus. The opponent, the Cincinnati Bearcats. Cincinnati's 3-5 and five in the Big 12, so right above West Virginia in the standings. Very impressive win at Provo, beating BYU there. They hung tight with Kansas and Allen Fieldhouse. So they're they're not bad on the road, and they're not bad overall. No bad losses on their resume. They beat UCF at home today. So could this be a game where West Virginia gets on Cincinnati's tournament resume as a bad loss? Possibly. Guess what Cincinnati's good at? Yes. Yep. Offensive rebounding. That's one. What else? Yep. Rebounding overall. What else? Uh huh. Yep. Defense. They're good at all the things that West Virginia may struggle with. And you got to watch out. I don't know how good they are, but you got to watch out for Day Day Thomas and Jizzle James. Those are guys that play for the Bearcats. Great names. And I would argue for Cincinnati. They've got to go to Lubbock on Saturday, so they have two road games in Morgantown and Lubbock, which is about as far apart as you can go in this conference. It actually, and I'm trying to help Cincinnati here, if they want to beat the Big 12 leaders, the 
the best record in Big 12 play, Texas Tech Red Raiders, if they want to win in Lubbock, I think the best plan of attack would be to lose in Morgantown on Wednesday and then go to Lubbock and win a bounce back game on the road. You know, speaking of tournament resume, bad loss at West Virginia, great win at Provo, at Lubbock. So in a week, yeah, you have to add the bad loss on there, but I think the bad loss gets you to a great win. And really, is it a is any loss? I'm I'm being a little facetious on West Virginia being your bad loss. Is any road loss in the Big 12 a bad loss? Maybe West Virginia's loss today. But that does neither of those teams are in the mix for NCAA tournament. I'm just saying, Cincinnati, it might serve you well for the long term to take this L, get refocused, and go to Lubbock looking to bounce back. I think that helps your cause. If not, then you're on a two-game winning streak heading to Lubbock. It's not, it doesn't sound as good, and you're probably going to lose. And you might lose if you lose in Morgantown. That, I, I guess that's the tricky part. <laughs> I'm saying it just sounds better. Bounce back game. Make Lubbock your bounce back game. And to bounce back, you got to fall down. And why not fall down in Morgantown? Will they do that? We'll find out together. That's it for this episode of Unreasonable Down. Listen on all the platforms or just pick one. Apple Podcasts. Overcast Podcast, Spotify Podcast, Pocket Cast Podcast, YouTube. Until next time, I'm Josh Witt, WVU, for the 2023-2024 season. They have seven wins, and they have 13 losses. 